guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at EVGA's uh, 1080 FTW Gaming Hybrid PCB. Damn, that name's long. Yeah, this PCB actually gets reused on the regular 1080 FTW as well as the 1070 FTW and the 1070 FTW Gaming Hybrid. I I'm not sure if it includes the gaming. Either way, the water-cooled 1070 FTW from EVGA also uses this uh, PCB. Before getting to Buildzoid's PCB analysis, this content is brought to you by iBuyPower and their new Element Gaming PC with a full tempered glass side window, tempered glass front, LEDs in the front and bottom, and it is basically a modified S340. Uh, there is some slight, uh, slight alterations for the 1070s, and we'll cover those right after we cover all the major VRMs on this card. So first things first, core voltage is right here, and second. So that there is the core voltage VRM. Uh, above that we find the memory VRM. Then down here you get the one, one volt PLL. So this is basically a minor rail that goes to the GPU core and it's necessary for some non-calculation related, non-compute related functionality uh, inside the GPU core. So the GPU won't work without it, but it's not important enough to, you know, have variable voltage control or anything. It just needs to be ever present. Uh, you can't access it via software. It is not affected by overclocking in any way, shape or form. And raising the voltage on this really doesn't affect overclocking either. So you don't have to worry about it. It is, however, copy pasted right off the Founders Edition. Like literally, even the component layout right here is the same as on the Founders Edition, and so you really don't have to be wor like, if NVIDIA thinks this will last the lifetime of a GTX 1080, then there's no reason to think, you know, to think that you need a stronger VRM here. So this is perfectly fine, and you can forget about it. Uh, then over here, we get the last VRM that's located on this card. This is the 1.8 volts for the GDDR5X, so this goes to the GDDR5X chips. Uh, 1.8 volts functions similar to this VRM right here. It has no impact on overclocking. It is not an important VRM. It does not need to produce a lot of power. However, the GDDR5X won't work without it. On the other hand, GDDR5 uh, does work without this, and so the 1070 FTWs don't have this VRM. This is just cut off on the 1070s because they run GDDR5, and this is only required for GDDR5X. So that covers all the major VRMs on the card. Now let's actually look at the uh, details of the VRMs. So uh, this is our core voltage VRM, and it has 10 phases. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and of course we have also 10 uh, power stage things to accompany them, right? So there, that's 10 as well. Um, now, I call them power stage things, so let, let's talk about these ICs here. Um, these are NCP 81382s. Uh, and I call them power stage things because they're almost everything you need to make a power stage, except they lack some of the more advanced features that a power stage usually has. Um, these things are a high side MOSFET, low side MOSFET, and a driver IC put into one chip. So basically, it saves cost, it saves PCB space, it improves efficiency because there's, you know, all of the IC, like all of your different uh, MOSFETs are all integrated really close together, so that obviously improves their efficiency. Um, there is really no downsides to, uh, to this design, so hooray for integrating everything. Um, either way, these things are rated to do 35 amps average current and 70 amps peak. So, you know, that basically means this VRM right here can provide 350 amps continuous current with ease. Uh, the GTX 1080 FTW, uh, you know, a GTX 1080 uh, at stock clocks requires about 160 amps. So this VRM, this one right here, is extremely overkill, right? Because it feeds the GPU core, which needs about 160 amps at stock clocks. 
Um, the typical overclocking range on the 10 series cards is about 15%. So, and you can't raise voltage on them. So 160 times, you know, you know, let's just slap on 20% onto that. So that's what 20% of that is 32. So that gets us to just under 200 amps. Uh, average power draw, this is built for 350. Uh, you really don't have to worry about this, uh, about breaking this VRM, because you don't, you, you can't control the voltage, and the GTX 1080 is incredibly power efficient. So, yep, this is extremely overbuilt. Extremely, extremely overbuilt. Um, so, yeah. But before we move on to the memory VRM, I would like to address one thing. Uh, you can't make 10 phases. Which is weird, because I just said we have 10 phases here, right? But you can't make 10 phases. Well, I mean, you can make 10 phases worth of components, but you can't run them like you actually have 10 phases. So the thing is, they're, they're the current, like, if you're going to go shopping for a voltage controller, right, the highest phase count you can get from the voltage controller is going to be 8. Nobody makes a 10-phase voltage controller. There's a very good reason for this, because 10 phases have basically no performance improvement over eight phases, and they are a hell of a lot more expensive to do just because of the the complexity required to do more and more phases is actually not linear. It gets worse and worse as you try to add more and more phases. So, this has ten phases, and nobody makes a ten phase voltage controller, so how does EVGA get ten phases? So they use doubler ICs, which are right here, and if you notice something, one, two, three, four, five. So there's five of them, right? And they're doublers. So obviously five goes in, times two, you get ten. Uh, and these are NCP81162s, um, they do offer, like, they're not completely brain dead, but with how VRMs work, they basically offer no real advantage over brain dead doublers. And by brain dead doublers, I mean, uh, so usually what you have is you have the control signal from the voltage controller. It goes into, like, if you have an eight phase voltage controller, right, you get eight control signals. But here, we have a five phase voltage controller. Well, I actually don't know how many phases the controller has because I never found a data sheet for it, but it has at least five. So you have five control signals, right? And so the controller no, will control the five, um, will feed the five doublers. And what the doublers do is they take that control signal and they pass it between the two phases. They don't actually, you know, they don't do anything miraculous to improve uh, your control over the two different phases. So usually one of these control signals will be like 400 kilohertz, and the control signal is literally PWM. That's literally how phases get controlled by PWM. So you have a 400 kilohertz PWM signal going into the doubler, and basically what these doublers will do is they will give that PWM pulse to whichever phase currently has the least current going through it. So that is some, you know, more advanced functionality, but just because of how VRMs work, the, VR, the phase that has the least current through it will almost always be the phase that wasn't la uh, charged the last PWM impulse. So these don't really offer any kinds of uh, control advantages. And so essentially, uh, you have the same uh, control over your phases as if you had a five phase, because the voltage controller is doing, you know, it's putting out 400 kilohertz uh, of PWM signals, but the actual phases see 200 kilohertz. So, yeah. This is pretty much the same power quality as a five phase. Uh, EVGA could have very easily opted to build a five phase VRM with much, much higher power phases, right? So these are 35 amp phases. EVGA could have gone and built a five phase with 70 amp phases and for all intents and purposes it should like if they didn't really mess up with any of the components too much it would get the exact same performance as this here 10 phase vrm so the 10 phases are very much a marketing stunt from my point of view like 
I see it as a marketing stunt. Now, 10 phases is not a complete waste of time and money and energy and effort, okay? Uh, they do have some benefits, having lots of phases. First of all, you spread your heat load. So the VRM will run cooler because, well, you have 10 phases uh, which, you know, are putting out heat instead of having five phases putting out heat. Because even five high power phases are still relatively small, and so you get really high heat density with a low phase count, which makes the VRM run hotter than if you have a lot more phases doing less, uh, you know, and sharing the work more. So this does have better thermals, but it doesn't really perform any better than a five phase uh, running at 400 kilohertz would. So mostly a marketing thing here, as far as I'm concerned. Now, you know, a 10 phase does actually have a benefit because if you want to, you can crank up the frequency on the voltage controller, well, on some of them, uh, if you have control over them, you can actually crank up the frequency and then you actually can get uh, you know, you, you can put like a megahertz into the doublers and then the actual phases see 500 kilohertz and then it would actually perform better than a five phase unless you also took the five phase to a megahertz except that would lower your efficiency because switching phases really, really, really quickly uh, lowers your efficiency. So yeah, this will be more efficient and it'll have better thermals but it will not deliver better power quality well, it's not even power quality, voltage quality than a five phase properly designed five phase, but still, you know, I think better efficiency and better thermals are probably enough to make this a justified use of 10 phases, even though I personally think they really didn't have to go 10. They could have done an 8 or a 6 or so many other VRM, yeah, you know, it's just, yeah. Oh well, at least they have a, one of the GTX 1080s with the most phases, because that's kind of what I think was the decision behind choosing the number 10, because it's more than most of the other 1080s as far as I know. Uh, I think only Zotac has a 16 phase card. So yeah, mostly a marketing thing. It does have some benefits, but that, that could be argued. Uh, then above that we have the memory VRM. This is a two phase using 4C85N, uh, you know, 4C85N uh, on semiconductor MOSFETs again. Well, not MOSFETs, the, these right here are a high side and a low side MOSFET integrated into one chip. Uh, so that's why we have two phases and only two, two ICs uh, instead of two phases and four ICs. Uh, the drivers for these aren't present because the voltage controller for these integrates the, like, has powerful eno enough PWM signals to actually fully power these on its own. Um, so, yeah. Um, each of these can do about 30 amps at 125 degrees. Uh, and that's worst case scenario, so that's 30 amps continuous. If you're not running them continuous, then they can do a lot more, since they're in a VRM, uh, you know, in a two-phase VRM, then they're not going to, and even if they were in a one-phase, they're not going to run continuous in a VRM like this, um, producing low voltage out of 12 volts. So, yeah, no concerns here. So you have 30 amps in each of those, so the whole VRM is 60 amps, and incredibly overkill because GDDR5X usually pulls around less than 20. So, yeah. These chips all together pull less than 20 amps. So, yeah, very, very overkill again. Um, and really no complaints about any of the power quality on the card. I mean, the 10 phase is a marketing stunt, but hey, uh, it's still a good VRM. So, you know, there's no reason to bash EVGA for it. It's just... It's just, I'm trying to make sure that you understand that just because you have 10 phases doesn't mean that they're better than 8 phases or 6 phases or 5 phases, right? They are better than 4 because you because a 4 is worse controlled than a, than a 5. But a 5, a 6, and an 8 can actually rival this VRM just fine for everything except maybe efficiency, uh, depending on how it's driven. So... Yeah, uh, so that's the VRMs covered, and over here, um, 
nice little detail. EVGA gives you a BIOS switch, so you know if you're interested in BIOS modding, this card will have you covered if you screw up, or if somebody puts out a unlocked BIOS for the FTW that actually gets you voltage control and higher power limits or whatever, um, you can go to town on the card because this VRM will definitely hold, you know, survive pretty much anything you can throw at it. And this BIOS switch will make sure that when you flash the BIOS, you're not screwed if something goes wrong. Um, so yeah, this PCB here is, you know, really, really nice. Uh, I I'm going to stop ripping on the 10 phases now. <laughs> but yeah, it it's a nice PCB. There's really no, nothing wrong with it. Um, you know, you can... Yeah, you can definitely overclock it to on air cool like on the stock cooler. So you know this comes with an air cooler or the or a closed loop AIO for the hybrid model. On either of those, you don't have to worry about ever you know getting anywhere near the limits of what this PCB can actually uh, power, of what this VRM can power and this VRM can power. Uh, even on LN2, I'd be pretty, I'd feel pretty safe ru for running this card on uh, LN2. Uh, my only complaint for trying to run this on LN2 is that voltage controller doesn't have a public data sheet, so I wouldn't be able to go anywhere with it. And that about, yeah, that covers everything there is to know about, well, everything worth knowing about the 1080 FCW Gaming Hybrid uh, PCB from EVGA, as well as the, you know, the 1070 FTWs and the 1080 FTW uh, regular air-cooled card. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, like, share, subscribe. And if you would like to support Gamers Nexus, there is a Patreon link somewhere, maybe on the video, definitely down in the description below, so you can go and support us there. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.